family goes oh na 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 oh na 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 purchase your come kick it come kick it with the What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the KC Crew. Welcome. Hello, 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 beautiful people. Welcome. And like we do each and every week, you know something that's very uh, special to us is our car shows. Because it's not just about cars and, and it's more about family. And the reason I say it's not just about cars, we like to invite you and your family to meet us and our family. And the best way to do it is through car shows. There's entertainment, there's jumpies, there's rides, there's cars, there's food trucks. There's so much going on. So we want to invite you again. It's August 17th in New York, New Jersey, I should say, New Jersey, the Meadowlands Expo Center, which is about 15 minutes from New York City. Uh, and we invite you guys. Kids five and under are free. We do uh, free haircuts for the kids. We do backpacks. So if your kid needs a backpack for back to school, we supply that while supplies last. And uh, hopefully you can hang out with us that that Saturday. I right? Again, for more information, you can hit up the website or you can email Ben's at djnvcarshow at gmail.com or click the link in my bio or Gia, uh, Gia's bio for more information. All right. Now, before we jump into the topic, right, I want to ask you guys out there, how do you handle, and we're not going to get into a Gia's like I don't want to talk about, it, but I just want to tip it, just a titch of it. How do you handle when your kids argue? Because our kids just had an argument, right? And Gia was like, Rashawn, can you handle it? I said, no, they're of the age where they can figure it out on their own. And that's how I feel. I feel when they're younger, you have to step in. But when they get to a certain age, I mean, they're 22 and 20, right? One's, one's about to be 21 in a couple of months. And I feel like they can figure out their own problems. They have to learn to lose, use their voice, their mouth to fix their problems. Uh-huh. And what do you think? I mean... When you said it, I was like, you know something? You're right. I'm so used to wearing the referee hat that whenever anyone has any problem in this entire house, they come to me to fix it. So I'm so used to that. I mean, it was literally six minutes ago. Correct. They just walked away. Right. Um, and he was like, yeah, we should talk about it. I was like, I don't want to talk about that. But you brought it up nonetheless. Yes. Um, <laughs> But when you said that, when you said, I was like, yeah, babe, can you handle this, please? Because I just don't feel like being bothered. He was like, I don't have to handle anything. They're 22 and 20. It's not my business. That's right. They can figure it out themselves. If they walk away from each other upset, that's their business. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Yeah, because I don't really have to throw my attention at everything that comes my way. Right. So and, you're right. And my whole thing is they can figure it out on their own. They're at the age where they don't have to go with each other. They have their own lives, their own cars. They don't know. They don't know what the problem was. You're saying that they don't. (laughs) So now I'm going to break down the problem. Now you're going to go through it. Now it's going to be a topic anyway. No, no, it's going to be, it's going to be light because I think, I think it was very interesting. There's people out there that have kids and I'm sure I'm an only child. So I didn't have any arguments. I didn't have to worry about arguing with anybody because I was by myself. I argued with myself. My GI Joes argued. You had a brother, you had two brothers that you, I'm sure that you argued with, but they had a situation where they're going to a concert tonight. Right. And, uh, Logan asked me for these tickets uh, and I got Logan the tickets. Uh, he wanted to go with his friends. So I got him four tickets in total. When I got the four tickets, I said to myself, damn, I'm sure Madison and her boyfriend would want to go. So I called Logan. I said, hey, Logan, I only got you two tickets and I got Madison two tickets. It was really Logan's tickets, but I figured if she would probably want to go as well. So she wanted to go. So now it's time for them to go out. Right. Logan wants to drive because Logan's hanging out with his boy and he's like, I want to play music. I want to hang. But Madison said, when I drive, I feel sick. So I don't like sitting in the back seat. So they got into this big whole argument about who's driving, who's going, who's not, who's this, who's that. And I said, you guys can figure it out. And not nothing. Logan had a good point. Logan said, when you take an Uber to the city, you have to sit in the back seat and you don't complain about getting sick then. So why are you complaining about getting sick now? Because she wants to drive because she suffers from car sickness. If she sits in the back of any vehicle, she feels ill. So whenever she has an opportunity to drive, she likes to drive. And they're both excellent drivers. And they both love to drive. So they're essentially fighting over who's going to drive to the city because they're trying to go together. 
Right. So I just said, both of you drive. I don't, I don't care. Drive I'm not separately. Going, I'm not going back and forth with you guys. You, you both have vehicles. You both get to the city. Y'all both drive. Figure it out. Like, I'm not f- fucking dealing with y'all right now. <laughs> then she says, well, I'm going to have a drink or two. Well, uh, so give so a- she doesn't want to drive back. So she might plan on going to sleep in the car on the way back, like go to the concert, have a couple drinks and then be in the back seat. Give Logan his opportunity to drive. It doesn't matter anyway, because she'll be asleep. So, you know, Gia said, well, y'all can Uber. And I said, OK. And then Gia was like, well, dad, you're going you're gonna to have to pay for the Uber. Yeah, because he seemed so dejected from the situation. He's like, yeah, if they want to Uber, they're going to Uber. I was like, well, you know, if they Uber, you're paying for the Uber <laughs> to and from. <laughs> so if you're OK with that, then I'm going to tell her, hey, just go ahead and take an Uber. And see, and this is the thing that I don't like, which I think is with this generation. It's called sacrifice, right? So she's going. She has a boyfriend. They're going. And she wants to Uber because she wants to, to drink. But this is how I look at it. It has to be a sacrifice. Look, you might not be able to drink tonight. Instead of having two drinks, have one drink and drive your ass. That's how I look at it. When Guy and I dated, there was no drinking because I drove. And if I drank, it was one drink and we kept it moving. That's what it was. That was my sacrifice. If I wanted to go, I drove. That was a sacrifice. Now that they will, I want to take Uber. Look, I ain't messing with y'all. Y'all figure it out. That's how I am as a parent. Gia wants to sit in there and talk about both sides. Well, you know, if if if, if you need your sister for something later on, then she's not going to do it for you. And this, look, y'all motherfuckers figure that shit out on your own. Y'all are grown. This ain't. The, the, but are you surprised? Like this is just how our individual personalities play out in everything, right? <laughs> like I don't have time for it. Like you guys are old enough where you can figure it out. It's not like you're eleven and ten and you're beefing over a, a piece of food or are arguing over something stupid. Like, look, figure it out. Gia wants to do it. How are you as a parent? Are you like It's that? not that I want to do it. I'm just inclined to do it because I'm their mother. Mm-hmm. So no. I'm a problem fixer. And, and that's my role. And see, and you know what? I was going to go one way on this podcast, but let's, let's talk about this. I do have a problem with some of the things that you do. I feel like I need a, need a sound effect right here. Dun, dun, dun. I feel like Gia is too much of a <laughs> fixer and she doesn't allow the kids to fix their own problems. Oh, that just dawned on you? No, it didn't <laughs> dawn on me. But the other, yesterday we were doing something and Gia stopped, took my phone and was on my phone for two hours fig- figuring out a situation when I was trying to do work with my phone. But this was the situation. It was an issue. And Madison had an issue, Right. And instead of Madison saying, look, I'm going to figure it out. She tried to figure it out and it didn't work. So, so she called in so, reinforcement. Here comes mommy to the rescue. It happens all the time with Logan. Logan can't figure it out. I'm going to call my mommy. Here comes mommy to the rescue. And what I think it does is I think it limits them <laughs> on what they can do because they know that mommy will fix the problem. Now, I'm not going to lie. Mommy's a good fixer. I go to mommy too. But I only <laughs> go to mommy when I know I need that bazooka. Like it's, it's good cop, bad cop bazooka. They go to mommy for anything. It could be three o'clock in the morning and I'm not flossing. I'm not fronting. I'm just telling you the truth. We have a gate. Instead of Logan saying, you know what? I'm going to open up the door (laughs) because it's raining outside and open up the gate. He'll call mommy at three o'clock in the morning. Mom, can you open up the gate from your phone? And mom will do it. There's a reason why they call mom and don't call daddy because daddy would say, oh, you got your fucking mind. You stick your fucking hand out that window, get your arm wet and you push the buttons. That's me. But they come to mommy so easily when they have a problem or situation. Why are you looking at me? You have to stop that. I don't think that I have to. I'm, I am their mother. At three, that, o'clock, at three o'clock in the morning because I'll he doesn't want to stick his arm out the gate? Little Logan's arm doesn't deserve to get wet. Wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't, Rashawn. Now, see, I feel like you're being <laughs> misleading. Am I lying? No. I think so because I don't think Logan. Logan yeah, just got cool. home from college a few weeks ago. Time? I don't think you put his arms are gigantic. Um, <laughs> that has nothing to do with what we're talking about, though. I thought. Um, I don't think that he has the app on his phone. Yeah, but you he, didn't put the app on his but phone. But he knows the code, and he can get out and type the code in. And uh, the the reason he calls you is because it, it's rainy, and he doesn't want to get wet. So he'll call. He he'll, calls me all the time. It's not raining every night. He, feel, he feels comfortable calling mom at two in the morning instead of getting out and typing the code. <laughs> <laughs> if Logan goes out to the city, uh, and he's trying to get to a, a venue, a, a club or wherever he goes and he can't get in. He'll call mom and be like, mom, you get me in. <laughs> <laughs> he 
he called me what, like four days ago? Yeah, it's like three in the morning. It's like two in the morning. Ma, can you get, do, Ma, do you know anybody at Marquee? What? <laughs> Hold on, let me make a call. <laughs> two in the morning. Right? Two in the morning. To the point where I'm DJing a club. I'm out and about. I'm DJing. So when I see the phone ring at 2.33, I'm like, oh my God. I'm about to stop the music in the club. I'm like, hey, what's up? You good? You good? Uh, Logan's at Marquee. Do you know anybody at Marquee? I'm like, if you don't get off my motherfucking phone. <laughs> this nigga's at Marquee. <laughs> at Marquee. Bang. But that, like, you have to stop. Like you have to, you t- you talk about all the time about letting the bird fly. You gotta, no, you gotta I'm fly. that bird. I'm not talking about my kids well, as birds. I'm talking about those birds. They, you got to let them fly. They fly. And for the situation that you brought up with Madison, she did call and try to rectify that situation. And she hit a brick wall. So she called me. If I had a dollar for every time our kids hit a brick wall and you had to call, I would be a billionaire. Well, it works when they call me. It works. So I would say that they're smart for calling me. Madison and Logan will be in a store and there'll be a situation. And then be, and I don't even, and see, this is the thing. And, and I guess this is a good thing because I don't even think I would have the balls to do this. They'll be arguing with somebody at a store, whatever store it was. And they'll be like, I'm going to call my mom. What? That's not true. As Gabe go, what? <laughs> That's my friend. What? What? <laughs> I'm gonna call my mom. That's not true. How old That's, are you, young guys, girl? Guys, you That's don't not, that, that don't happen. That's not true. That, that don't. Happen? They don't tell the person that they're arguing with in the street that they're gonna call their mommy. That's not true. Now, see, now you're wilding. <laughs> but <sighs> okay, this coming from someone that when he goes out to eat, and he's not with me, he's with his friends or. He just finished DJing a club or he's about to go DJ a club and they're grabbing a bite to eat beforehand. He will call me and put me on the phone with the waiter to order his food. Yeah, but that's different. But you're in a problem. There's a problem. You looked at the menu and you can't decide what to eat. No. So you call me. Either he does, either he'll put me on the phone with the waiter or he will take pictures of the menu and send it to me. So I can mark it up and circle what he should order for his appetizer, his entree, mm-hmm. and his side. But there's a reason for that. Why is that? Because in this relationship, there is bougie and there is hood, right? I'm the hood part. Gear's the bougie part. I'm not bougie. So when I go to these restaurants, Applebee's, I know a daughter. <laughs> TGI Friday, I know a daughter. Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> I know what to order. Even if it's a seafood place, I know what to order most of the time. But now when I go something that's outside of my comfortability, outside of my zone, let's say sushi. We go to a sushi spot. I don't know what none of those rolls are called. I don't know the difference between a, a California roll or a, a, a surf and turf roll or a this type of roll. If I should be using green paper or seaweed, I don't. Honestly, it's soybean no. paper, See? not green paper. <laughs> See, I don't know. I just know what I like. Uh-huh. And she knows what I like. So she can order and be like, my husband likes this roll, this, this, with this, this, boom, boom, boom. It's done. Cool. So my kids know that I know how to solve a problem that they may or may not potentially be in. So they call me. Where's the difference? If I want to go to a restaurant and I want tuna tartare, which I just started eating tuna tartare a couple of years ago. No, but... you did. You've been eating tuna tartare for like 15 years. But... Stop it. I don't know how to order it because sometimes it comes different. Sometimes it comes where the... Avocado. Avocado. Mango. Uh-huh. Tuna. But, ponzu sauce. But sometimes the avocado is not fresh cut. It's... It, they they mash it and then they put they put it together. It's called puree They something? pack it into a layer. Almost puree. It's right, not quite puree. I don't like it like that. She knows how I like it. So she'll tell them fresh cut. This It is what it is. This is my wife. That's what she's here for. That's what she's supposed to do. But with them, <laughs> it's a little different. There's no difference. All right. Well, I just want to... You just... call me often. So? You call it a bazooka. You just put different labels on when you need assistance. When the kids need assistance, they need to get cut off at the knees. It makes no sense. You just want those privileges for yourself. And you know what? And I and I check her sometimes just to see if she really does it. And I will say this. I do have to give you a lot of respect, right? And, and this is not the topic of the show today. I just, this is something that sometimes we just talk about frivolous shit that goes on with our life. I have to give you a lot of respect and a lot of love, right? Because sometimes I call gear at five o'clock in the morning 
just to see her reaction, right? We might have gotten an argument two days before, and I just kind of want to stick it back to her. For instance, right? Uh, S. Dot is in town, right? And S. Dot is is staying with us, so he's staying at the guest room. And this morning he didn't get up, and we needed him to do something. So I said, I'm gonna call Gia this morning and see if she's gonna do it. And when I call her, no problem. Okay, babe, I'll do it. And I'm sitting there like, nigga, if you call me at four o'clock in the morning to do something, I'll be like, you gonna have to call me in two more hours because I need my nap. And Gia gets up, she does it, she clicks the picture, she went downstairs, she woke him up, we got it done. And I was very shocked. And you kept you kept saying, okay, so you were shocked because you kept saying, no, I need you to get up and do it now. I said, yeah, I understand, I'm going. You said, no, 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 like right now, I need you to make sure you don't go back to sleep, don't close your eyes, I need you to get up and go do it now because I need it by such a time. I'm like, okay, I'm getting up, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm getting up right now, I'm putting my pants on, I'm going downstairs right now. Yeah, so that's why, so you didn't believe that. No, um, I was very impressed. I would say kudos. Kudos. Okay. So, right. so you guys just use me. Yeah, because I don't like, like you wake me up for bullshit sometimes and I don't like it, but I, I, when I wake you up for bullshit, you I have no problem with it. What What do I wake you up for that's BS? You wake me up for some bullshit sometimes. Like what? Why are you looking at me like that? Because what are you talking about? What do I wake you up for? You sh- A man should never be woken up out of his sleep when he has to be to work at four o'clock in the morning at 2.30 in the morning to fucking find a remote control. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Do you ever wake up at 2.30 in the morning? Babe. It's so babe. true. Babe. It's so babe. true. Yes. You ever seen a remote? <laughs> yes. No, nigga, I haven't seen a remote. I don't even know why TV in the bedroom. Oh, so you ain't seen a remote? No. It's not, under, the, your, it's not under your pillow? Not under your pillow? No, it's not under my pillow. Hold on. Then she'll be like, <laughs> so you're not going to help me look for it? It's 2.30 in the morning. I got to get up in two hours. Am I going to help you look for it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Babe, so I'm just I'm just going to do my, my facial regimen and I just, just, I'm not going to watch anything. <laughs> so now that's my fault? That's my fault. I just need help. I need assistance. <laughs> I, see, I can't, see, I don't have the privilege of being able to call in the reinforcements when I need something. And then, and this when is what, it's me, there's limitations. And this is what pisses me off. I get up, I look, I look, <laughs> and it's right there. Here. Oh, I didn't see it. This nigga here. <laughs> this nigga here. But all right, let's get to the topic of the day, right? Okay. The topic of the day is- But you wake up and help me look, though, don't you? Yeah. Because if <laughs> you not, you're going to keep me up. You do it. Let's talk about oh, work-life boy. balance. Okay. Now, now, this topic came from actually uh, a caller on The Breakfast Club the other day. Uh, a gentleman called and- he was damn near in tears. He said that uh, he was losing his family over his work life. Uh, he was saying that he worked so much that his wife wanted a divorce because she felt like he was putting too much effort into <clears throat> his job and not his family. And uh, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. And it's, <clears throat> it's a tricky line, right? And I'll explain why it's a tricky line. For every man out there or every woman out there that's out there busting their ass and you have a family and maybe a husband's at home or your wife's at home and you try to balance that life and you have kids, it's very difficult, right? And the reason I say it's so difficult is, you know, we try to provide as much as possible, whoever the breadwinner is of the house. We all know that life is short and that these jobs could be short. I always say that these jobs don't give a fuck about us. They will turn us over and get a new person like we didn't matter. I've known people that put 10 years into a business, 20 years into a business, and they just got let go. And the problem with that is a lot of times when we just when we just let go, a lot of our life is relied on that job, on the work that we do, whether it's our mortgage, whether it's our car note, it's taking care of our kids. So if we lose that job or that job <coughs> is taken from us, we're going to have a hard time figuring out what's next. It's not easy to turn over a job, right? It's not easy just to say, all right, well, this income is going, I got this, this income. So for myself, I always think about, I just got to get it. I got to get it and get it and get it and make sure that I'm good because when it's over, it could be over. Um, so for the beginning uh, of my career, I worked like a maniac. Six days a week, seven days a week. Um, and I did not think necessarily about work-life balance. I always just said, she'll understand. She knows what I'm doing. And I didn't take into consideration how that affected her, how that affected my kids, how did that affect our family? Because 
all I wanted to do was get that bag. Um, as I got more established in, in my industry, in my job, I was able to fall back a little bit because I have a lot of the comfortability and, and things that I need to make sure that it's good. But it was very difficult trying to figure out what that balance is. <clears throat> Did you actually put any thought into figuring out the balance? Not at first. Mm-hmm. Not at first. When um, I got more established in my career, I did. Mm-hmm. Um, because I started missing things that the kids were doing. And I told myself, I didn't want to miss those things. That's not true. What do you mean? In the beginning, when you were busting your ass working like a maniac, you didn't miss the kids' things. No. Do you not remember that? No, I didn't you miss. Would I would go be, crazy. Mm-hmm. You would be in Texas. You would be in L.A. No, I'm not talking about that thing. I'm talking about the little things like um, because you, picking up the kids from school. Oh, okay. I miss like uh, practice I would miss. Okay, because I what miss, I remember is if Logan or Madison had a game, a recital, a performance, they're receiving an award. Hold on a second. Did you, you, you hear that, right, Vince? It's not out and over. He, he won't see it, right? Okay, just making sure I can have sorry. If it were anything significant, mm-hmm. you would schedule all of your appearances or all of your shows around that event. And I remember you taking two and three planes mm-hmm. to get back for a championship game or to get back for an award ceremony or anything. So you didn't you didn't miss, but yes, you weren't there to pick them up or drop them off to school. You weren't there maybe for some practices and things of that nature, but you were always very cognizant of making yourself available and not missing a beat. For the big things, but for the smaller things. And it didn't even have to be a championship game. I remember you flying back or missing things or um, foregoing opportunities to be there maybe just for a football game but now, that wasn't a, a championship. But now I'm totally different. Now when it comes to the kids, I mean, think about it like this. London is 11. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was the first time out of any of our kids that I actually went to school and did a bring your dad to school day. Mm-hmm. Usually I couldn't do it because I was working. You mean I went bring to your time. kids to work day? No, bring remember, bring your dad to Oh, your okay. Dad to yeah, yeah, day. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually I couldn't do it. I've never really picked up our kids from school unless I was on vacation. But I may I pick up the kids all the time. I know my daughter's routines. I know my daughter's coaches, not just the sports, the dance coaches, because I'm so there. I'm so into it because I'm able to take that freedom and that liberty to say, you know what? I don't have to do this now. I don't have to go as crazy because I can enjoy the kids as much. Because you feel more comfortable. Because I do feel more comfortable. Is there any other reason? Uh, And I enjoy it and I miss it. I always enjoyed it and I always missed it, but I felt like I was at a point in my career where I couldn't, and this is the the effed up thing, I couldn't take a vacation because I couldn't let anybody get in my spot. Right. So I was not taking a vacation. I was not missing a day. I was not missing a club. I was not missing an appearance. Now it's like I do what's best for me. You know what I mean? And like to this day, I can do my kid's dance routine because I'm at practice so much, you know? Uh, to this day, this is my part. This is my part. Right? She about to do the. Yep. <laughs> even even Jackson, it's like I'm <laughs> learning soccer based off me learning it with Jackson. I've never played soccer. I've never watched soccer in my life, but Jackson loves it, and I'm able to follow what a hat trick is and what a striker is, and that it, like I'm able to learn all these things because I'm actually there. being more involved with yeah. it, opposed to just being at the game. Mm-hmm. So, but it's. It's difficult because I understand what that work-life balance means and how difficult it is. But I always say, thank God I had a wife that understood that because you could have been a bitch and be like, no, you're not at home. I don't see you. You're on the road. What does this money mean if I'm not here, if you're not here? But you are so understandable. And a lot of women are not that un- that understandable. Mm-hmm. Um, Logan's leaving. Peace. Okay. Are you driving? Come here. Is your sister going with you? Come say hello. You say what? You can stand behind. Just say hello. Camera's right there. Oh, Come here. You bend down. Are you in the frame? You're so cute. Come here. <laughs> we just told all your business. But just keep in mind, the tickets are in your name, so you can't go inside until she actually gets there because you have to physically handle the tickets because the tickets are in your name. 
That can't happen. We're about to leave. She hasn't even showered. I'm not just an hour. Logan, show your arms real quick. Well, like I said, it's not my problem. I'll, I'll, I'll hide it under a cone. Like, you cannot hide it under a cone. Just call and let her know. Call her and let her know that you have to leave. What time does the concert start? She's not even and she's not even dressed? I'm just saying, I just don't believe it. She just came downstairs to hide it. She's not dressed. She's literally in her fuzzy pajamas. All right, well. All right, well. Y'all figure it out. See my, my, my answer to everything? Y'all figure it out. Look. But anyway, uh, I, don't I was know. like, I was saying that if um, if you don't have a wife or somebody by your uh, side that makes it understandable, how do you deal with it? Because obviously the guy's wife didn't understand; she didn't yeah. care about the money, but he did, especially if he's the breadwinner. Did you ever consider, um, at the time, how I felt or what I thought? Was it even a consideration? No. Why? Um, Is it just like what you said? Uh, she'll she'll understand. No, because if you watch the podcast, you know, Gia and I are very alike. Like, we are very alike when it comes to pretty much everything. So, if it's Gia's birthday or it's our anniversary and there's a check involved somewhere else, Gia's going to be like, we're going to celebrate our anniversary or birthday the next day. We're not going to do it that because Gia's like, let's get that check, let's get that bag because we understand that it could be here today and going tomorrow. So that's, I know gears like that. Do I take advantage of that a lot? Yes. Um, because I know she'll understand. It's the truth. Y'all think that's funny? It's the truth. <laughs> that's funny. Like, you know, Ben's will call me and be like, hey, we got an opportunity, but the problem is, is, is Gia's birthday. I'm like, book it. Let me talk to Gia. Oh, so you book it before you talk to me? Well, I don't tell you that. I just be like, hey, babe, do you mind if I do this show? And you'd be like, how much? And I'm like, this much. You'd be like, yeah, go get it. All right, cool. And then it's already done. This is the nine times out of ten. But I just know, I know. I know. That makes you a liar. <laughs> because you have definitely... Wait, that thing that happened my last birthday, right? Mother's Day. And my birthday. <laughs> I said on Mother's Day. And birthday. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Just Mother's Day. Mother's Day and my birthday. Yes, ma'am. And both... Oh, our anniversary was Madison's, Madison's graduation. graduation. Oh. Mm-hmm. And both times you told me that there was an opportunity that presented itself, but it's on your birthday. So I just wanted to know what you thought before, you know, I even thought about whether I'm going to take it or not. That's called respect. No, that's called lying. No, but if you said, if you said, get, get you it said together, baby, think, think about what you're going to say. If you said, baby, <laughs> and then if you said baby, I would feel a way. I would cancel that party without a doubt. Not even a question. If you say you would not, cancel, but why even book it? You book because you know what my answer is going to be. Right. But yeah, I, he's right. I'm always going to say, go get that. But, I, but you know, it's like anything else. If somebody is offering to book you, you say yes. Because if you say, well, let me think about it, they might be like, all right, I'll book somebody else. So I always say yes, and then we go from there. Okay. It's no problem. So, But what are your thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts, you know, I feel like I'm a little bit of a strange bird. Mm -hmm. You know, I... You know, you, you relate everything to bird, but go ahead. Everything's a cage and a bird. You let the birds fly, close the cage, open the cage, let them fly, parrot. Burp, burp, burp. Okay. Maybe, but I, I do. Th I think I'm a strange bird mm -hmm. um, because, and it's funny because Ben's always says this, always. I, she, I think she said it like, I don't know, like maybe five days ago, but she's like, it's crazy how boss is always so busy. He always has different things to do. He always has to fly here, be gone for this weekend, be gone for that weekend, travel here, drive to Pennsylvania, da, 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 and you're always cool with it. You're never like, oh, we don't spend time together, or oh, we don't talk, or oh, you fall asleep early, or oh, this, or oh, that. And I'm just like, yeah, because I don't feel that way. And she's like, you know, because Benz is in a new relationship. So she's like, you know, I always want to be up under my man, and I always want to, you know, and I'm like, I understand that. I want to be up under mine as well, but I never, I guess ever since we were first married, I probably programmed myself against being a nag. I never, ever wanted to be the type of wife that nags. Um, and I don't ever want, and I've said this before, but I don't ever want someone to do something because I asked them to do it and 
not because it came from an organic and genuine place. I don't um, ever, I don't believe in ultimatums. I don't believe in backing someone into a corner. I don't believe in guilting someone. I believe firmly in letting people do what they want to do. And I have the freedom to make a decision Mm -hmm. for myself based upon the choices that that person made. It just so happens that I always, it never did bother me because I always admired you and respected your grind. I always was in awe of your ambition and how much that ambition cost you. You know, you were always tired, always exhausted, barely able to pay attention when he was physically there, barely able to keep your eyes open, um, always on a plane, having to suffer that separation from your family and missing me and missing the kids. That's not easy for you either. So I kind of felt as though, who am I to be felt sorry for when you're really the one doing the hard work? Do you know what I mean? I get to stay back, enjoy my children, and enjoy the fruits of your labor. But then what? At the same time, oh, he's never here. To me, that didn't seem very logical. And I saw all the efforts that you made. Mm -hmm. So if you weren't making efforts and you were just taking kindness for weakness, or if you were exploiting the grace that I showed or the understanding that I showed, then it's a different story. But you were always appreciative. Mm -hmm. You always made the most of the time that we did spend together. Um, Like I said before, you were always there for the kids when Mm -hmm. it mattered most. And you would move mountains to do those things. So. I never looked at it. I never felt like cry me a river. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think I programmed myself to be okay with it. Like, okay, I may be alone this weekend, but how am I going to make the best of my time? What am I going to do? I'm going to do things that I enjoy. I'm going to spend time with my kids. I'm going to take them somewhere. I'm going to teach them something. I'm going to have experiences with them. And I'm going to send you videos and pictures. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, But... you know, it's, it's a little difficult to put into words to make sure that you guys understand me, but to be a nag almost feels weak to me. It almost feels as though you're kind of begging someone for something. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to take it out of this experience because I never had the desire to nag you that I had to suppress, Mm -hmm. but just, you know, nagging in general. Um, I just, I never wanted, I never wanted to do that because it feels as though you're begging someone to do something for you that they wouldn't genuinely and authentically do. Mm -hmm. And I'd never want to be the recipient of anything that would come from that because then it's meaningless. You know, I like to live a life of meaning and I love for all of the special things to be special and to come from your heart. Um, not because I kind of made you do it because it's worthless, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's why. And even now, you know, like he goes away and he's gone for a weekend or whatever. And it's like, all right, call me when you get there. All right. Let me know where you're staying. But you do understand from, I mean, you do understand, but I I think in relationships, people do have to understand whoever the breadwinner (laughs) is. Like they, they, they go out there because they have to. And sometimes, you, you, you know, as you can say, you can be considerate and ask, but what has to be done has to be done. I be mean, considerate and ask what? Like, regardless of how somebody feels, somebody has to go get that money. Because it's, money's required, you know, but money doesn't have happiness. But well, money pays not for rent. necessarily. Money it, doesn't hold on happiness, now. Money pays for, for the clothes for the kids. Hold on. Money pays for activities. Money pays for school. So, money pays for all that. Okay. Now, if you have enough money and you're just overworking, that's something different. Do you know how much the number two at McDonald's is right now? Nine ninety nine. Yes. Hmm. Nine and change. Yeah. When we were coming up, it was two ninety nine plus tax. Was how much? 
Like 314? 324. Because <laughs> we always used to go to McDonald's and get a number two. But now for nine And when we didn't have it like that, we would split the two cheeseburgers. He would have one cheeseburger and I would have the other cheeseburger. We split the fries and, and sip the Coke with each other. Yeah. But, <laughs> but We're going back to high school, right? But the difference is, is like, shit is so expensive now. You, you can't expect somebody to be like, all right, well, I'm going to be home all the time and not work. Now, if they're doing other things like smoking weed, playing cards with their friends, playing basketball, playing video games, I completely understand. But if that person, that breadwinner is out there hustling, making money to provide for your family, you got to get a person. But that's snack. where. You got to be understanding. <laughs> okay. Because they're not doing that because they want to. They don't want to go to work. They don't want to be like, oh, I want to go to work. And not. No, they doing it because they like. You have a fun have job, to. though. I do, thank God. Yeah, thank you, God, you I'm enjoy lucky your I job. Do. But a you lot of people your don't, and they have to work, and they got to so, work overtime, and triple overtime, and quadruple overtime, and time and a half, and take this person's shift because they're trying to provide for This is where your question kind of comes into play. Yes. You said, let's talk about a work-life balance. When you balance something, it's a conscious effort, mm -hmm. correct? So I spoke my piece, and then what you said was, you know, that conversation of consideration doesn't really matter because I got to go out there and get it. Mm -hmm. The balance part of the conversation is how much of it do you really have to get? And that's where there has to be a meeting of the minds because it's dependent on what type of lifestyle you want to live. Because we can live a life where we're just comfortable, where you work a quarter as much as you do. But we live more of a life of abundance. So you're going out and taking those abundant opportunities. But it doesn't have to be that. Do you see what I'm saying? No. You can have, we, earlier on, we could have, if we did have a conversation, it could have been where our goal was to be on the same page if we had different approaches, if we had different opinions about what we wanted our lifestyle to be. You know what I mean? Where we could have said, you know what? These are the things that will make us happy. And this is enough. And this is all that we need. And you could have worked less. And that could have been the lifestyle that we led. But that wasn't our choice. But when you say, you know, I have to do that. You don't have to. But it's to support the lifestyle that we live. Do you understand what I'm saying? But it, it is to support the lifestyle we live, but it always and our over. future and our future security, but yeah, and but, retiring, right? And our kids' but education. All that matters. It all does, mm -hmm. but you know, our daughter didn't have to go to NYU. She could have went to a SUNY or a CUNY. That's that's. Do you correct. understand what I'm saying? It all depends on what you envision and what sacrifices you're able to make or decide to make for what it is that you envision. But, and um, I'm bringing that up because people that are maybe a lot earlier on in their relationship or earlier on in their marriage, these are conversations that you may want to have. But see, but, but because if I wasn't... Everybody wants the same. Hold on. Because if I wasn't on the same page as you, and we happen to be on the same page, so this is a copacetic situation, right? But for people where it's not, you may have a wife that values the time that may be more needy of the time or even a husband that might be more needy of the time spent where the lifestyle may be secondary or may not be as important at all. But they might just be happy living a more modest existence. But see, but that's bullshit, right? And I'm going to tell you why it's bullshit. <laughs> There's not why are you always calling my thoughts and feelings and emotions bullshit? I'm going to tell, I'm I'm tell you why. Because there's not one person out there that will say they don't want their kids to have all that they want for Christmas. There's not there one. are. Yes, there are. And I've known people. I have known people. And it's different strokes for different folks. There's no right or wrong. You have to decide what's right for your household. I knew a family and we weren't friends. I just knew this family. I knew the mother. I knew the kids. I didn't know the husband, but I knew the mother and the kids. And they were very well to do. Very well to do. Both husband and wife had extraordinary careers. And it was their stroke that 
their kids would only get one, each would only get one gift for Christmas. Mm -hmm. They only had two kids and each one of those children got to pick a gift up to $300 each. And that's the one gift that they got. And I remember the, the little girl chose a camera, the Christmas that I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. And you out of here. See? Bye baby. No, nothing. Sorry. No, nothing, nothing. We're, we're, um, we're taping our podcast. Uh, how are you getting to the city? I'm driving. You're driving. Okay. Well, say hello to the people. Come say hello. Yes, yeah, behind, behind the couch. couch. Right, right there, there, right there. Right here. Uh, bend down. Shape. You have to. Bend. I don't know if you're in the frame. It wasn't that bad. Matt, get down was... lower. I don't know how how tall the frame is. Say like, hi. hi. We just right. told you all of you in Logan's business. Yeah. Oh, here's Andrew. I'm right, right? No. <laughs> hey, right, Andrew. Well, see you later. I am right. I'm no. trying to save money, no. not Ubering to the city. We talked all about it. Get out of yeah, here. See? <laughs> Andrew, peace. I know. I realize. Wait, wait, wait. Get out of here. Stop. <laughs> Bye, guys. Sorry. Um, go ahead. I think you were you were saying? Um, no, I was saying, I was saying it's, it's bull crap because, no, you were saying that the mother get what, got one gift per, per, yeah, per Christmas. Yeah, yeah. So that but, was their prerogative. Right, but I, yeah, okay, that, so that's that situation, saying, that's, that's very far and few, right? But anybody who's listening, you want the best for your kids, right? And and when I say the best kids, if you get it, if you get a, uh, the ability to have your kid go to a school, which is an okay school, or one of the best schools out there for education that will teach your kids and really prepare your kids for the next level of this world, teach them business. You want your kids to go to that school. If if you have the ability to put your kids in activities where it can make them better as people, whether it's dance, whether it's basketball, there baseball, are... skiing, golf, and you have the ability to do it, you want to do that for your kids. Most people would want to do there that. There are parents that I know who can't. There's a mother that I know now who doesn't because she values her time and how she spends her late afternoons, early evenings. She's selfish. I, she shouldn't that, have kids. That happens to be my opinion. But, and it's funny because we were out somewhere and this conversation ensued. And the moms said something along the lines of, you know, your kids are in this, they're in that, they're in that, they're in this. How do you do it? You're from here to there, to there, to here. And you do this every day and you're constantly shuffling your kids around. And this mom said, I'm absolutely not built for that. This is what my late afternoons and early evenings consist of. This is my routine. And if I did that, then I wouldn't be able to also take care of myself and do the things that I like. So they get to choose one thing that they do for an hour a week and that's their extracurricular. That's selfish. I mean, we may think that because that's not our prerogative. So we may be biased. You, but I'm here to tell you. If, if it's affordability, that's different. But if it's just because I don't want to spend time on my kids, you don't really want kids. I don't think it's time with the kids. She doesn't want, she didn't want to spend time driving them here and there what do I have and to? elsewhere. You, one hour a week and the rest of it, the rest of the week is for myself. Then you really shouldn't have kids because you really don't care about your kids. Well, my, no judgment. And, and if you can afford it, that's something. If you can't afford it, that's different. If we're talking affordability, I understand. But if you just basically saying, I'm only going to give my kid one hour a week to do anything and the rest of it, he's going to be in that well, room. Well, she, she has two kids. So two hours a week? And, hold on. She has two kids and she has a little, like a Peyton, who's not in school like Peyton is. Softball be two hours a week alone. Well, I'm sure if it extended to two hours, then, she, then, then you're on your own. But the point is... 59 minutes, little Bobby, you got to get off the field. Regardless of how little many Bobby hours... I think what I think what she meant was that each child gets to pick one activity. Mm -hmm. And like I said, she has a smaller child that she takes care of as well. So she's like, I have to prioritize where it makes sense for me. My point is, mm -hmm. regardless of your income, um, as a couple, it's important to have these conversation and to prioritize what that balance is. What's important to you? Are you a wife that would value the time with your husband or the fruits of his labor and the life that you're able to live and the vacations you're able to go on and the type of home you'll be able to live in and the type of cars you're able to drive and the type of schools your children would be able to go to? Or, you know, is it more important that you guys get, you know, four Netflix and chill nights a week and tons of great sex because you have the time and the energy to have it? You know, like what's important to you? Because 
when it comes to deciding your your career path and how you navigate that, these are things that are going to come into play because Mm -hmm. you can be following your dream and your spouse, whether it's the husband or the wife, can be left home twiddling their thumbs, feeling unappreciated, neglected, and unimportant. You know, how many women have you known or have you overheard or are you familiar with that have said, oh, my husband doesn't pay me enough attention or I don't feel like a priority in my husband's life. I'm the lowest thing on the totem pole. He's more concerned with work and friends and going to the games and going to see the fights and going, doing all these other things. And then if there's time for me, then I'll get that. I I get the scraps. A lot of women feel that way. So Mm -hmm. you really do have to negotiate that work-life balance. And it's not just, oh, well, it got to be done. So I'm going to do it. You just have to figure it out on your end. Not necessarily. Okay. Well, I think in bottom line, I think those are conversations that I think people should have uh, actually really before getting married. Of Of course. What's expected, what's not expected, what's appreciated, what's not. And I think together they need to to get to those goals, whether it's having a home, but the price of that home. What are you talking about? You know, you guys are loud. You're You're very very disrespectful. Very, very disrespectful. But as we were saying, (laughs) um, I think those are conversations they need to have beforehand to figure out what they want in life, create a budget, understand what work means to them, and being able to enjoy that time. And I think from there they can. Mm -hmm. Well, we did. uh, It's time to get up out of here. Wanna? Oh, okay. Well, you want to get to a a, a quick email? Just to have a little bit of time. Okay. Hey, Casey Crew, call me AJ. I've been watching your podcast since 2016 when you released the very first episode. Oh, hi, AJ. I like hearing perspectives from both sides. For context, I'm a 20-year-old, 23-year-old female, Mm. and I'm in a committed relationship with a guy who I met in a Facebook group. So we are long distance, though. We are planning to move in and get married. We've been together for over four months. I wanted to know both of your opinions on past crushes. Should you end a relationship with someone you Mm. once had feelings for if you're in a relationship? I have a guy friend whom I met a few years ago and did have a crush on him at some point, but he never knew and I always kept things strictly platonic. I will say I don't talk to him all the time and when I do, it's usually in groups. The odd thing is last year, he added his girlfriend to a group chat we were in with our friends and her and I became close friends and I wouldn't betray her. I will not tell her about the past crush because I'm not the type to ruin relationships. And now thinking about it, he isn't someone I would date anyway. I guess I'm wondering, is it uh, wrong to still be associated with someone I like, even though I kept boundaries? I will say he is the type to tell his friends he loves them, but I don't tell guy friends I love them since I'm committed to someone, despite him saying it in a brotherly way. When I'm on group calls, I make sure that I talk about my relationship and everyone knows nobody has a chance with me besides the guy I'm with. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts and maybe I'm overthinking it because I just want to be as loyal as I can to my man. Um, I think you are overthinking it. I mean, you had a crush on him and I mean, we all had crushes, have crushes. Who have you had a crush on? Younger people. I'm kidding. (laughs) Younger people. uh, And I think that's what it was. It was just a crush. I mean, you guys didn't do anything. He didn't even know. You didn't flirt. You didn't kiss. So I just think it's one of those things. And you said you don't feel that way about him now. And regardless. Um, so I think it's fine. I, I, I think you're overthinking it. Um, you had a crush on him years ago. You said you listened to the podcast in 2016 and you're 23 now. So that was, damn, you was, Jesus, you were like 16 listening to the podcast. But you heard some crazy stuff. I'm sorry for your virgin ass. But I would just say that, no, I, I think you're overthinking it. You're with a new person now. You have no feelings towards him. So I wouldn't even feel away. I wouldn't even bring it up. That was something old. I would call it baby crush. You know how to say baby love or whatever it is. That's a baby crush. There's nothing to even think about. You're not doing anything wrong or foul or disrespectful. So I wouldn't even pay it any mind. It wouldn't even be a thought. You're cool with his girlfriend. You and his girl are cool. But what makes me think about it is that you even thinking about it to bring it up. So it feels like maybe you still have a little crush on him now. Um, but as long as you don't act on that crush and you have a man that you love, I don't see a, a problem with thinking somebody's cute or handsome and thinking that you had a crush on him before, as long as you, that you don't act on it. What do you think? I think it's a non-issue. Mm-hmm. And I think you summed it up and wrapped it up really well. Mm-hmm. It's a complete non-issue. You never had any type of relationship with him. Mm-hmm. He didn't even know you had a crush on him. So it seems as though you're almost feeling guilty for having thoughts 
We all have thoughts. That's right. So there's nothing there. But what do you think about, let's take it outside of the email for a second. What do you think about still being friends with someone that you may have been in a relationship with and it turned into a friendship? Mm -hmm. You, You went your separate ways, but you know, you still, you still know them and you're in a relationship, but you've been friends with that person for quite some time. Do you think that that's okay when you venture into a new relationship? Because um, doesn't it kind of, I mean, there's a lot of different angles to approach it, but doesn't it seem kind of foul to cut somebody off that you've known and that you've cared about and that you do have a friendship with because you found a new man? Because then what happens if you and your new man don't make it? Let's say you only last a year, but you ended a friendship mm-hmm. that existed for a long time before that, is that fair? What are your thoughts on that? I, I feel like if, if everybody's out in the open, I don't see a problem with it. I mean, if it's really over, meaning that your relationship is over, you guys are friends, there is nothing um, sexual or flirty with it. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, and as long as that your new man and his new girl know and everybody's comfortable with it, it's, the whole thing is being comfortable with it. And if you guys are comfortable with it, I don't have a problem with it. I don't I don't. See a problem with it. So that's a little interesting coming from you. Mm-hmm. So, right? That's mm-hmm. that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so you'd be okay with me being friends with someone that I was in a past relationship with once I'm with you? Depends. Explain. Uh, if it was somebody in a past relationship that was a good person and never hated, then I wouldn't have a problem with it. But if that problem. But the trainer just doesn't have a chance. Right. No, the trainer doesn't have a chance because he's new. But if the person hated on but you this before, guy I slept with. Was like, just, no, no. I mean, because it's just like, you know, like one of, one of the people that um, your exes hated on me. What? Right. One of your exes that you were dating when, you know, you started dating me was throwing salt on me. One of, one of the ones that used to come to your house and talk to your mom all the time. He hated oh, on me. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So what, once that hate is there, I don't want to be a part of it because if you hate once, you'll hate twice. But if it's, if it's if he's a person that y'all are just cool with and he understands and I don't have a problem with that. But if it's somebody that has hated before, I do have a problem with it. And as long as that we're all friends, like they said, they're all in the group chat. Okay. I don't have a problem. So if I reached back to an ex from when I was 15. Why would you reach back? Let's say we bumped into each other somewhere Mm -hmm. and he never hated Mm -hmm. and we were cool. And I'm like, oh, guess who I ran into? So-and-so like, you know, he has a girlfriend and whatnot. Like, why don't we all go out to dinner? I don't have a problem. You don't have a problem with that? That's your friend from back in the day. Not my friend. Or your ex Ex. from back in the day. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. I think he's evolving from two or three podcasts ago, guys. Different situations. (laughs) I think he's evolving. As long as he's not a trainer. <laughs> so but... proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to email us, you can thekccrew at gmail.com. That's T-H-E-E-K-C-Crew at gmail.com. All right, it's time to get up out of here. We'll see you guys next week. I'm DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And that was another edition of the Casey Crew. Toodles. Give me a kiss.